Mankind has utterly relied on tools, and the first tool was a hammer. Right after that, somebody put a sharp edge on it and made it an axe, but an axe really is just a hammer with an edge. A hammer doesn't have to be on a handle. I mean, there's a hammer head without the handle, and it's still a hammer. The way a hammer works as a tool is this. The movement of the hammer before it gets to the point of impact is storing energy. You see that? You're storing energy as you swing that thing, and then it discharges in a moment at the point you choose. Now, someone smarter than I may correct me on this, but from my perspective, putting a handle on a hammer is adding leverage to the process of storing the energy. The lever applied at this fulcrum, and this fulcrum, and this fulcrum, and lengthened increases what happens when the hammer gets there. Simple machines are what keep us alive, okay, even today. So the different faces on a hammer discharge the energy of the blow into the workpiece in a different way. It concentrates or distributes the energy. For instance, this little cross pin, if you, I use the flat face, the energy is discharged across the entire surface if I hit, if it's a fair blow, and is thus just a flat spot that you're creating. But if I use the cross pin, the same energy is concentrated so the pounds per square inch or pounds per square unit are much, much, much higher when I hit with that little narrow edge. Can you see that that is going to travel much further into the piece and cause that react the reaction of the piece to a concentrated point load is going to be different than the piece on a more distributed load. Can you see that? Now hammers are made out of all different sorts of materials. I mean, there are space age materials, polyurethane and different types of plastics that are used for purposes. Think of a dead blow hammer. There are hammers made of brass and hammers made of copper and hammers made of lead. There are hammers made of wood. Now what use would there be for a wooden hammer? Well, woodworkers often or sometimes use wooden hammers. You wouldn't want to be marring the end of a nice wooden chisel any more than you had to. If I use this hammer, over time, what you're going to have happen is that the handle will deteriorate. Okay, now I have abused this. I, I made this firmer's chisel a long time ago, and usually it has a handle about that long with an iron ring around it because the wood mushrooms. Because when I'm building decks, man, I'm hard on that. But if you have a nice set, this is a nice old chisel, you're going to want to be gentle and still get the work done. You can see how abused this is. That's because I've been using it in my blacksmith. A wooden hammer in a blacksmith shop is used to straighten and sort of adjust pieces that have been textured or twisted or decorated. Because I can hit that, I can hit a hot piece of steel and not bruise the edges of a twist or the, the rounding hammer texture. I can straighten things out. I can't forge them. You can't forge. That is, actually move the metal. But you can straighten metal with a wooden hammer. This guy doesn't weigh much. Like a pound and a half maybe, and the handle's short. So you see that hammers come in different sizes so that you're storing and discharging greater or lesser amounts of energy. After three or four years of using this guy, five years, I confronted the reality that this is so light that it doesn't have an effect on any sort of piece of steel that's even moderately heavy in section. It's like thinking of actually moving some metal in a serious way with this, when what I really need is this. I was talking to my good friend Travis Robinson, whom you've met, about my problem, and he said, hey, could I make you a wooden mallet? Look at this. Now, Travis, if you're seeing this for the first time, it's showing the marks of wear. I, you knew that was gonna happen. That thing weighs four pounds. This is the analog for this. And if I get something that needs to be straightened or needs to be, you know, just refined a little bit, but I don't wanna leave a mark that can't be taken out that compromises it, this is gonna do it. He's got lead poured in here. He's got a hard maple head, although you can see what's going to happen over time. I've never seen a heavier wooden mallet. Now they come big, but they're light because it's only wood. And what you need is mass coupled with speed to get energy. If you're a blacksmith and you need a hammer like this, and if you have woodworking skills, go to his channel. He shows step by step how to do it. If you're not interested in making a hammer like this, call him up. I've known Travis since he was 12 years old. I think I'm just about recovered from that first couple of years, okay? He was can we just say he was intense? But he can do anything. That kid can do anything. I think you'll enjoy his channel. I know I'm enjoying his hammer. Check him out. Thanks for watching.